everyone. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to my Sunday photo editing live stream. Uh, thanks for joining me today where I edit your pictures that you submitted uh, live. And then also um, I always put out my picture there for you guys to edit. It's always fun to see what you guys do with uh, my picture. And I think it gives a great perspective on what, you know, seeing the same picture done by a dozen different people. Uh, and all the different visions that you have and hopefully it sparks some creative ideas it certainly has for me because and you guys do some amazing editing on my photos so uh, i do my best on yours and i i limit it to try to limit it to about a four minute edit if i can so they're quick and and just look at my edits that i do to give you a little different perspective or some ideas and also uh, look at it as just a starting point for uh editing the photos and hopefully you pick up a few tips on how to use uh, Olympus Workspace. Uh, I, I'm gonna do all of the uh, Olympus RAWs and JPEGs first, and then uh, if you submitted any uh, raw images from other cameras, uh, then I'll have to go into Lightroom, and I always do those after I finish the Workspace edits. So, uh, without further ado, let's see who's here. We got Randy and Jeff Painter and Dave Nelson, awesome. Uh, Wu Dang, oh, always good to see you. You were, you were, you missed it last week, man. Yeah, I had some kung fu moves. <laughs> I, I dropped my camera and I caught it like really fast. The kung fu reflexes anyway. I've always wanted to like learn kung fu for the, just to get kind of fit and healthy, you know, and, and, and the self-confidence and everything else that martial arts gives you. But uh, Wu Deng has a great kung fu channel. You know, you guys should check it out. And he also does some photo editing and dark table. Uh, recently with with my photos so I'm gonna have to watch those but I might do a stream using Darktable because it's a free photo editing software that's really powerful uh, and fast faster than workspace for some reason but let's see I think I saw a new couple new names here Jill Rutland um, awesome and there's another one Tina Bergstrom Welcome, welcome to my stream. I'm glad you're here. I don't think I've seen your names here before. If you have been here before, I'm sorry, I forgot. But <laughs> otherwise, that's awesome. And DeMarkin and Lauren. Serge, always good to see you. Jonas. Dave Nelson. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I need Velcro on my gloves and... <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, I got Velcro on my flashes. The pain though, putting it in and out of the bag, if I had Velcro on the cameras, they'd always be sticking in the bag, wouldn't they? Um, Nature with Music's here, good. And, and a lot of you were in the last stream when I had Maddie and, and uh, uh, Emily on. There's always a treat to have them both uh, talking about Panasonic side because and I try not to be too gear centric. I mean, I love Olympus, but it's it's good to talk about other cameras sometimes just to kind of get some perspective on what's out there. It's always interesting to see what companies are doing in the camera industry. But OK, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's see. I need to get to the right screen. It's this one. Great. And it looks like we've got about a dozen pictures today, so. All right. Oh, John Yutse is here. You know, John, you watched, uh, well, I'll talk about it on Tuesday, but John, John watched one of my old, old, old streams, like from over a year ago when I just first started streaming. Uh, but thank, thank you. That was a very kind comment you put down uh, about, about that stream. All right, let me get my timer going. Oops. All right, there we go. We have here one from Randy, and Randy has a great series where he's visited these ghost towns or something. I guess this is part of that series. And you do much better editing than I do, so I got a, I got a pretty high bar here to meet with your photos. I think, let's see, composite, this looks like a submarine. Is that a submarine? Wow. And we got some foreground. I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to cut out all this foreground. This feels too much into the frame. And it's not really adding to the story, I don't think. 
or information. Whenever I compose pictures, I, I try to only keep as much information that we need about the scene as, as necessary. Uh, so I try to be minimalist in some, some respects. Uh, and I, I get that from my uh, real estate photography where I try to show uh, the most important information about that particular scene or that room rather than just show everything at once, right? <clears throat> but let's see. The train, it's a train car. Oh, okay, okay. I see that. So there would normally there'd be wheels down here, and this is a tanker. I see. It looks like a submarine, though, with a little periscope up here. Um, all right, let me let me find a crop here. I spent up like I might have to go over four minutes. Let me try a one by one. I'm gonna keep the colors here. We got good colors. I guess four by three works, but I I just don't need all this all these all this wood down here. Maybe what that looks like. That's a little bit tight. Go a little wider. That works, and a little straightening. I'm going to just take a shortcut here. Dramatic tone filter. I got my mic on, right? Okay. Uh, I mean, no, I want the color. That black and white was pretty interesting. I'm going to go with that, then I'm going to crank up the color. I can do more. Already on vivid. Ah, uh, happy with how the dramatic tone worked on the color. I liked it on the black and white, but let me go natural. More de haze and clarity. <laughs> Lauren says sepia. <clears throat> I like the color though. I mean, this this red is contrasting with the blue, and then we have sort of these these tones here though are a little bit off. I need to I need to work with the hue a little bit. This orange needs to be more red. Try that. Having any effect? Because these art filters, they apply their own tone curves and things, and sometimes it's just uh, sometimes it's futile to try to adjust things after the fact, after you apply an art filter. Yeah, that's just not having the effect that I want. Um, luminance wise is good. Let me try. Let me try a different filter here. Ouch! Now it looks like punk, like cyberpunkish. Yeah, this black and white looks good. I'm going to go with black and white. I prefer that. I mean, I'm just going to adjust split tone it and then we'll call it. So let me add a little sepia into the shadows. A hint of blue in the highlights. Pull the sepia in. Oh, 
All right. <clears throat> so that's look at a before and after. So that's my before and after. I I really wanted to go with the color, but it just didn't didn't pan out that way. But I think that looks really good. Ma mainly it's in the crop. The processing you can almost do anything with this, but I think the crop is really I'm, I'm really proud of that crop. <clears throat> um yeah, that looks that looks really good. I like that a lot. That's a great picture. Randy always, I don't know how you get these images so tack sharp. EM1 Mark II with a 7 to, that 7 to 14 is amazingly sharp lens. Um, I'm really impressed with what, what you can do with that. Okay, let's go to the next one. And this is from DeMorkin, and he's using the EM10 Mark II with the kit lens. But this is the Panasonic kit lens, f3.5, 1500th ISO, dialed in a negative exposure comp, center weighted. Yeah, these are all good settings, I think. Uh, nothing I would change there. Oh, thank you, Jill. I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's see, for this one, I think, Again, this, this whole left side is very distracting from what's going on over here. So, crop in just to the left of this pole. Keep in the brick. Oh, there's a person here too. I wish I could crop out this person, but then it'd be too tight. Oh, I don't have my timer on. Then I would say, color-wise, be good. He throw in some sharpness. Like the green here with this red. If I can have any individual color shots here. So I'm going to add a little gradation. I'm going to go to auto gradation and then pull the tone curves in. little straightening. I think a vertical crop. Yeah, and the right side is very green heavy. Yeah, I think I have vertical. I think uh, Roman's, Roman's got the right idea. Now these flowers kind of lead you in around the, the image. I need, I need to get a little bit more blue in this. It's a little bit heavy still on the green. So that's a white balance. Thing. Probably just a little bit cooler here. 500. Maybe a slightly tighter crop. A little bit off the right side.
Yeah, very good call on the crop, Roman. Uh, so let's pull off a little, little bit of green this way too. Okay. Good. Check some of the details. Crazy about this edit. Ah, crap. Um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit too creative, but that got rid of the green for sure. That's kind of what I was going for. Let me try the other one here. Might be too, yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I'm out of time. I'm going to go with this number four. Okay, let's do, uh, Oops, why didn't that? For three, there we go. Uh oh, hold on. Workspace locked up on me. Try this again. Crap, none of the edits stuck. Hang it. Let me just do it real quick. Basically, really tight like this. Then it was a partial color filter one. We did three here. Back this. All right, that was it. <clears throat> we'll do a before and after. Oh, and a little straightening I missed. But uh, yeah, I think the crop again is is kind of the key to this image. And then uh, the green was very heavy, so the partial color got rid of too much of the green, in my opinion. But um, I think that the, the way the flowers lead in around the pond up to the bowl, I think, makes it the only distracting thing is that person sitting there, right? The person in the background. But yeah, I think that works. Okay. Thanks to Morgan. All right, this, this, I bet this is Wudang, yeah. What did you use today? Sony with the 28 to 75, F2.8, one two hundredth of a second. Okay, good settings. I like, everybody's kind of interesting in here. But this is the most interesting part, but I like, I like this lady and this dude and this family, this lady smiling. I think everything in the shot has to stay. Because uh, everybody in here is very interesting. 
Um, trying to think what would be a little bit tighter. You know, so we really focus in on the people. Get rid of that one kid not facing us. A little bit on this side. That looks like Lionfish photo, hello. Yeah, I think just a little better. Wish I didn't have to come up this high, but because this kid is doing that. Add a little bit more. Right there. Uh, and then, let's see. A little bit soft there. This lady's in focus. So let's... Um, monochrome but let's see if we can enhance a little bit more if we do a yellow and no see if I can bring their tones down a little bit oh man this is a monochrome to begin with so these filters aren't going to work uh, that's not going to work Wondering, I'm debating about going a little bit less contrasty. On this shot, <clears throat> a little less contrast might be better. Just so we can really make out their faces. Add a vignette and we'll call it. Uh, try the haze and then sepia. Interesting. Um, we got a we got a few seconds. Let me try that. Sepia. Yikes. Just dial it in myself. I'll do a split tone. I like my sepia better than the box sepia. Split tone it a little bit. You know, I think this this camera seems to be a you know the the JPEG doesn't feel totally black and white. It has to be because I put it here. If I do that. Let me try one other thing. The gentle sepia messes with the tone curves. No, I like the black and white. I'll just go with a little bit less contrast, though. I don't want the people's faces to be blown out. Okay, we'll call it right there. Uh, let's do a before and after. So yeah, I think the main thing is just just getting in tighter so you can really see their faces. It's a, just a hair too wide. Um, I'd almost crop in this lady off also, but then the picture would be a little bit off center more than it is already. Because the background is a little bit off center. And cropping in more would throw that off more. I think um, 
I think that works. All right, let's uh, go to the next one. Looks familiar. I think I've taken, I've seen this scene, but from a different angle. Uh, this is from Bob. Yeah, definitely, Bob. This is the same location, just a different angle. Um, and we did what? EM5 with a 12 to 50, 31 millimeter f6.3, 1400. So this all looks good. Air off, but it's not great. That's pretty good. We can see a little more detail now. All good. Uh, I might have to put in a low noise filter. Do some dehaze. Got a second to render. Uh, I don't think the color is gonna gonna make it. <laughs> Sky replacement? No, not gonna do that. There's there's some color here, but I think. Black and white might be. Ugh. Dry. I'm going to go with black and white again. I hate doing that. But. To separate. Press the scene. Oh, I'm out of time. All right. Had a vignette and we'll call it. So it needs to render a little bit, but again, it's with the it's it's just basically again just focusing on what's focusing on what the information here is in the picture. Right, so the picture on the left, there's just too much grass and really more sky than we need. So cropping in, I still have all the information about this scene that you would need, but it just simplifies it a little bit. And then getting rid of the color again, simplifies it some more. 
Um, I think that looks that looks okay. Looks okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. This is a bird. Okay. This one from Tina. Okay. T oh, Tina's new here. I don't recall seeing anything from Tina before. So EM1 Mark II with a Leica 100 to 400 at 400 millimeters, f7.1, 1, 2000, the ISO 1, 1000. Okay, good settings, I think. Good settings, everything is frozen. With this lens though, at 7.1, right, you don't have any choice but to crank the ISO. But, um, okay, this one I'm gonna do a crop. Nature shots, generally, I like to do square crops. I'm in right there. Be a little tighter. The bird's eye kind of centered. That works. Full to auto gradation. <clears throat> you had you had your camera set to low key, so that's kind of killing the shadow detail here. Uh, so I put it back to auto. Then we'll throw in a pop art filter to bring the color back. And let's see if we can bring any details back. And do that. Turn this, turn the filter off for now. And do an unsharp mask. Do a 20, 1.5. Uh, pull this back. The low filter back on it. I don't, I don't know, flying fish. I, I'd rather have the bird and more up in the top right corner. As you were saying, I should crop it with the leaves kind of falling off on the right. I think what you were saying. All right, let me work on the tones a little bit, and then we can look at the crop again. Let's go to 6,500 white balance. Vignette, just maybe at seven. Just like all the oranges. Oranges are a bit too orange. Okay. Now the thickest part of the bottom branch on the left. Oh. All right. <clears throat> That, yes, I think that's what you're trying to tell me.
Okay, let's call it here. <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Basically, I brought out brought back all of the shadow information best I can. And uh, <clears throat> it's hard with, with a long lens like that when there's not enough light because you'd have to crank the ISO up to uh, bring up the shadows more. And then that would introduce more noise, which with birds, the problem is that you know, that you want to see all the fine details in the feathers. And as soon as you start cranking the ISO, um, you, you start losing all of that fine detail. <clears throat> but uh, I, think, I think we did the best we can with, with the, the information that we have in the file. So, okay. Thanks. Uh, you know, right? Thanks for sending that in. It's a great shot of the bird. Perfect settings. What you may want to consider is actually if you attach a flash to the top of your camera and put it on a very narrow beam, it'll help illuminate or fill in some of the shadows for you. Uh, and then you can keep your ISOs high, even with a flash. But the flash, when you add light with a flash on a shot like this, it'll retain a lot more detail because you won't have to pull the shadows quite as much. But okay, um, let's go to the next one. I'll have to do a video on that one day. Go out with my flash and do some bird shots and then you can see the, what a big difference it makes even when you're at high ISOs, I think. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> All right, this one's from Frederic. Hedberg. Wow, this is another new name I haven't seen before. Uh, this is an interesting shot. Look at them. Maybe, maybe all these trees are on a hill, but I got to straighten it out. And I'm wondering... Bring some color back in. Okay, good. Pull the greens back a little bit here. And crank up the reds and orange. <clears throat> now Lauren says the flash is going to irritate the birds. Actually, I haven't had a problem with that. Every time I use flash on the birds, they don't seem to mind, to be honest. But... I've only done it a couple of times, so maybe those birds were just nice, but... All right, that's good. A little bit more orange. Actually, let me pull the orange back and crank the red, see if I can get some definition here. Oh, not enough red in there. Orange and pull the yellows back. Keep all of these a little bit high. <clears throat> all right, now compositionally, let me focus on this a little bit. Yeah. I'll put a heavy vignette real quick. Right. 
all that work I did, colors. Back off this vignette. Pull in a little bit more. Great name. Oh, time's up. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, Bigfoot. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so yeah, my initial thought was like pop art to really bring out the colors, but then the image was still a bit too busy, so I just flipped it over to a soft focus and um, try to give it a little more surreal look. That initial vignette I did was a little too heavy, but this, I think the vignette now is just about right. I'm, I'm curious if a vertical crop would be better. I'm gonna explore that real quick. Uh, this would work better if, if like the logs were leading you into a scene like a, a lake or something or a mountain range. So I don't think this crop works particularly well, but maybe that, that kind of works. You get a little more information on the leaves and stuff. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm going over my time. Let me just throw some sharpness back in, turn this off. Yeah, I don't think the vertical works too well because it's just not leading you into anything. So, um, this, this uh, wide crop is the way to go. I had originally. Something like that. And then without the vignette. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> hmm. We have a cat here. The eyes closed. I don't know if this street and all of this adds anything. I kind of like, all right, let's, this is gonna be a major hack job here. I gotta straighten this cat out. Go to a square crop. A little bit of the street, maybe. Man, this is just out of balance here. And when I when I say out of balance, I mean there's just too much too much weight over here on the car. Try that.
I mean, I was trying to save some of the foliage over here, but... Man. Like the ugliest car ever. I, hope, I, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but this car is not very interesting. I think... We're very tight here. We need to see the opal sign. See, I don't even know what kind of car this is. It's an opal, apparently. I think that's enough right there. And then uh, I'm going to pop art it. Sharpness back in. It's all good. Seven on the vignette. Some more straightening. I'm not sure what else I can do here. I'd, I'd sharpen it a tiny bit more, maybe this way. Try this. Two. Roman's making another crop suggestion. Let's let's. I mean, he called it last time, but I don't know if going wide makes sense here. Uh, I don't, I don't think, ah, oh. let's go back to my square crop. right about here. Just the window. I, I, I kind of know what you mean, but I was hoping to see a little bit of the reflection of the cat on the hood, too. We'll let that render out. Okay, so that's my final edit. <laughs> wow. feel like I, I I just feel like maybe oh come on workspace um, I'm not sure okay let's go to the next one uh, this is from Dipendra Maharshi oh this is cool let's must be a 60 millimeter. What is this? This is a Redmi Note. Oh, this is a cell phone shot. Okay. Um, let's do, do this. Verticals may be okay. Come in tighter. And there with the sharpness. 
try the pop art again. The pop art's really pulling, pulling all the way today, isn't it? Uh, let's go a little bit warmer. And get rid of this. Do it. Can't do it. Gotta have. Colors are just quite right. The greens. Become a little more yellow. Okay, flying fish, we'll see you later. Thanks, thanks for dropping in. Always good to see you. Uh, okay. More vignette. Give you a quick cloning stamp. And a little bit on the tone curve, and we're done. You just compress it a little bit, yeah. A little bit more warmth. All right, that's all I need to do there. So before and after. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. I, I personally, I prefer a little heavier vignette, but uh, maybe just fix this one spot. Right here. Now we're done. All right, good. Um, Pendra Mahash Dipendra Maharshi, thank you. Thank you for sending that in. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, thank you, Plato. Um, thank you, Nature. <laughs> John, you guys are always nice to me on my edits. This one, John follows with an EM5 Mark III, 12 to 45 Pro, 32 millimeters, F8, 1 100th. Okay, all good settings. Um, thank you, Ed. <laughs> How are you, Ed? <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for telling me your story on the uh, on the forum. Ed used to work at Olympus, actually, not far from me, about four hours away. And um, retired now from Olympus, so to speak. But if you want to read about it, he's, he posted a nice little thing on his forum, on my forum. Uh, let's see. 
This is very green. I'm going to go black and white. I never like green and blue like this, you know? So, wait. I'm going to go monochrome. Yeah, I'll work on the uh, crop. I think, yeah, I definitely got to crop something out. Oh. More contrast in this. But green filter is going to brighten everything up. I see what that looks like. Okay, fine. Get in there. Let me think about a crop real quick. Uh, go kind of wide. That one tree in there. Other thought is to, uh, if I do color, warm this up to about 7,500K. See, that helps it all. Helps a little bit. I think Lauren has a good point here. Thing in here. Oh. I'm using up my four minutes just waiting for this thing to render. I need to pull back the highlights a little bit. Good joke. All right, that's about all I can do in four minutes. Let's see how we did. Um, I got mixed feelings about the vertical. It needs to render, but... Oh, come on. Now it's a little bit too yellow. I need to, uh, yeah, I need a Mac, Roman. 
<laughs> Roman knows me. I'm never going to buy a Mac. Maybe just 7,000 K. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, John, I tried. I like the 16 by 9 crop I had. Uh, the vertical crop is just not working for me either. I prefer heard my crop here. Uh, personally, this was the crop. This is the crop I would go with. Um, and it's taken forever to render today. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, all right, I can do this one. This is from Image Rider. This one, clearly a square crop. Bring that corner in. Pop art. Sharpness. Do auto on the gradation. That lens flare. I like I can go in tighter. I'm losing my I'm losing the rule of odds here, but I really want to see all this detail. All right, we'll just stick with the original crop. Be a four by three. <clears throat> oh, no, I like I like the color Wu Dang. Honestly, I mean dramatic tone in color might be kind of interesting, but let's just take a quick look. No, and then black and white. I like that. I like this a lot. All right. Yeah, I like that a lot. 
I'll finish this one just ahead of the schedule here. I like that. Now we got, now we can really see the details in the leaf. So basically, I got rid of all the distractions here all the way around it. Fix that little lens flare or whatever that is. I like how the light is really bright right here in the center. Like that. Okay. Um, cool. Really, really nice shot. Okay. Um, Lauren, another location I've seen before, just different shot. This boat. And I would love to have this boat. All right. Um, these people over here are a little bit off, a little bit too far off. Um, Take them out. Drop. I keep thinking about that James Bond movie where the mountain opened up and this big antenna came out. What was that? Diamonds Are Forever, I think it was with that movie. <laughs> when I see this mountain. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's look at the exit real quick. GX85. No kidding. 45 millimeter at F5.6, 1 1,000th ISO 250. So yeah, perfect settings as always with Lauren. You can always count on him to get the settings right. Uh, I like this red against the blue. I'm his Lauren, Lauren. Lauren always sends me a JPEG, so it's hard to work with the colors. Pop art is just drawing it. He just work with the tone curve a bit. A little bit warmer. Maturation wise, let me see if I can bring those reds up a little brighter. Yeah, that's what. More saturation, maybe. With the blues. Pull the blues back. Blues a little bit more heel. I can fix um maybe the haze will do it. I think we're good on the tone curve. I just don't see, every time I touch the tone curve, 
This is this area is just too dark over here. I can give it a little let me let me do that. Alright, I know what to do. Let me do that first and then pull the gradation back in. Oh, crap, I'm out of time. All right, sorry. Let me push the tone curve back. Pull the color back just a little bit. All right, now I'm done. Oh, I think it needs to render a little more, but I'd have to tweak the, the color a little bit because I'm getting a little bit of banding now in the sky. But uh, that, is, that, is the, that is the direction I would kind of go. And then... Hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's not bad. It's mainly it's mainly those those tourists over there on the right that are distracting in the picture. So, uh, yeah, that works. It needs to be a little warmer because it's a little bit too cool here on the boat. Probably did that with the color. Let me pull that back. But okay, let's go to the next one. And oh, a nice little waterfall here from Ian. Uh, let's see. What did we use here? EM5 Mark II with a 12 to 100 f4 and 18 millimeters at 5.6. Wow, good settings. Okay, so soft focus. A little bit warmer. Go to eight thousand K. Pull the blacks down. Whites up. Losing some detail here. Press it. Darken it for now let me try this again. That Okay, Plato, we'll see you later. I need to eat after this myself. I'm so hungry. Uh, yeah. Kind of losing its soft focus look when I put too much contrast. I think that's it. Let me just double check the crop. A little more headwind. We'll center this tree. So bright up here. 
I just don't like how this is so bright. I have to clone that a little bit. Let me see if I can clone just a little bit from here. A lot too dark here. Terrible job cloning. <laughs> okay. Uh... It needs to be warmer, it's still cold. Wait, a 9,000? No, that's good. Now we're good. Maybe the tab. All right. Not a vignette of maybe seven or eight. Uh, okay, I think I'm done. So, uh, and the original picture is nicer. <laughs> I thought I thought I did something, but I really didn't do much here. Gosh. Very, very subtle the edit. To nine thousand. Hang in. This your the original looks really good. I kind of overdid it, maybe. I just didn't like this top part up here. That was the main reason for the crop. Okay. Uh. Yeah, it's a really nice photo, though. Never mind my editing on that one. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have one here from Ed using, let's see, the M1X with a 40 to 150 Pro, 40 millimeters, f3.2, 1 200th. Okay. All good settings. I mean, it may be a. Slightly faster shutter speed, maybe we would have captured some more detail in the smoke. Other than that, I think we're okay. Let's straighten a little bit. This line to be straight. So vivid. Seven thousand on right balance. Not bad. Go totally opposite here. Ah. 
Let's stick with color. A little vignette. Haze for the team. The haze slider. There's anything to be saved in the steam because like I said the shutter speed was a little slow for this steam. Yeah, it's all gone. Uh totally blown out, so I'm not gonna be able to save it. Ouch, come on, stop it. Okay. Oops, out of time. I'm going to call it there. Uh, I mean, there could be something to black and white on this. Let me just look at a monochrome. Nah, I like the color. I like the blues and the reds here, this contrast here. And then the only thing is the steam here got got clipped either because the shutter speed was too slow and I would have I mean not only that obviously exposure but I would have used the faster shutter speed to freeze a little bit of this steam okay uh, yeah and then I got rid of the foreground for the crop but yeah this is a great picture like I said, pictures like this, you can kind of go in 10 different directions with it, but this is this is one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the straightening was kind of just, just a me thing, you know? I agree, though, Lauren. Sometimes, you know, you want it to be a little bit off because it's more natural when you're looking at it with your own eyes, but okay. Um, you guys like the monochrome? All right, let me leave that on for a moment so you guys can look at that because I, I just blew through it very quickly. If I did this in monochrome, I would definitely crank this to haze up like this. And, uh, let's see, this was blue, this was red. So let me pull in a red filter so you can see the window a little better. Up a lot, close to. And then I would split tone it. 
with a, just a hint of sepia in the shadows and some blues up here. Here, let me reset that. Pull this back a tiny bit this way and a tiny bit that way. Shadows in. That, that would be my black and white edit. More or less. <laughs> I think that looks pretty good in black and white too. Right? Uh, it's mainly in the crop again. The cropping today, I felt like was the most important thing. Um, Okay, let's check Lightroom for anything else. Uh, Steve asked me not to do this one. I'll do I'll do it anyway real quick. This Canon. I need this one. One. A lot of uh All right, good. That's all of them. <clears throat> all right, this one is uh, from Simon. Pull up. Wow, this looks really good. The question is, the auto auto's going to jack. Well, bad. I do an auto here. Go a little wider. So much on the because you know the sun kind of leads into this here. Let's see. Oh, it's an old one before you went to Olympus. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a cannon. I see 10 millimeter. Brush. Or I try a little dehaze before painting. I'll just silhouette this. I don't think there's any hope of bringing that back. Yeah, there would be too much noise. Okay, so I'm just going to silhouette, gonna silhouette the structures. 
for the haze, all the black. I kind of like a little bit of, a little bit there. Not too much because it's noisy. Color this. Okay. <clears throat> oh, clar clarity is better for like speculars and highlights. The haze is better at certain tones of the image, Walter. Um, so it crushes the blacks, but it doesn't get it doesn't get too high in the highlights. It tries to stay in the midtones and the, and the shadows, whereas clarity tends to kind of push the highlights and clip them. So just to give you an idea, see see if I push the clarity, see how it pushed the highlights up everywhere. Versus if I turn it off, I mean, actually, clarity looks pretty good here. A little bit more contrast. But the haze, you know, it just, the haze just works on the shadows. So if I pull the haze off, you know, you can see, I don't know, that's, that's just the way I think about it. Uh, if I push clarity without the haze, I, I like that too much. Like, like this, uh, kind of like the blacks being crushed a little bit. Oh, time's up. All right, so let's uh, let's see how that worked out. So very subtle, basically a, a slight crop and uh, some contrast, more or less. Um, but yeah, I just cropped off this left side, this, uh, this walkway, mainly because, like I said, I think we have enough information here to kind of figure out what's going on. But yeah, it's beautiful sky, beautiful morning. All right, let's go to the next one. The horizon's pretty level, Walter. Really close. It looks off because of the way this steps in, but... Yeah, I think we're okay. Put this right on the line. It's a tiny bit off, but not much. Maybe a half a degree. All right. Oh, let's see. Fuji Fine Picks X100 from Surge. Okay, good settings. I think this is a bridge camera. I'm not sure what kind of camera this is. Oh, this is the original Fujifilm X100, isn't it? I'm guessing, but I think I think that's what this is. So yeah, these trees and this sign are the two most interesting things. All of, what is that? That's just a roof. Whoops. Um. No, I I got rid of that piece. I, I got rid of it. It wasn't the right camera for me. I I ended up getting a Fujifilm XT30, and that that wasn't right for me either. To be honest, I need to sell it. I'm gonna let me focus on this. <laughs> I just want the trees in this sign. I don't know if this uh. Crop is any better? And this this is really a nice little camera, though. I really like this image, actually. 
I mean, just the tones and the color are pretty attractive. Uh, prop two. Yeah, Surge, I think this was your your bargain, right? Your bargain deal. <clears throat> paid like what, a hundred bucks or something? Like you paid nothing for it really. Um Okay, so that's that. I think that's good enough. Black and white here. Tiny bit. Make it too pretty, but blue, green, yellow. Blue to green to yellow. Okay, Lauren, we'll see you later. <laughs> uh, a little torn. In color and black and white. Oh, excuse me. Stick with black and white. A little more headroom. Yeah, I can. I can do HSL in, in black and white. I just have to remember where all the colors are. So I can pull the blues down a little darker, like so. Maybe raise the greens. Not much red in there. All right, so let's do a little split toning and we'll call it. Go a little bit teal there in the shadows. Bit of blues, a little bit more. Yeah, either way, uh, color black and white, right, nature? Okay, Ed, hey, thanks for coming in. Um, but anyway, let's call it here. Um, you know, the original image was cropped or framed so wide, which, you know, you don't have a choice on the X100, right? But um, I think um, I think I like this better than the color. And we can see all the trees in this sign. These are the, t these are the main things in the image that I thought were interesting. But I did like the color to some extent before I applied all this toning to it. Okay, that picture can go either way. All right, uh, let's see. P81, 60 millimeter, this is from Dawid. Oh, okay, Dawid was here earlier. Oh, thanks, Serge, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> um, nice little, this is interesting architecture. Very bold choice. <laughs> the reason I say that because you know you're always going to have to put a picture here because this is weird architecture. Let me, let me uh see that this straightens it out some. Go with. That. 
and go there. Colors are a little. Yeah, he's pointing to the dirty corner, right? Uh, Good. Get this crop real That's it. But off just. Nature says, and Simon, a 16 by 9 crop to remove the bright corner. Come on, the bright corner. Let me get rid of the lettering here. I mean, I, li I like this part right here coming down. This line. And we can look at a 16 by 9. I just don't think that's going to help. But I kind of like... I like I like this whole line up here. I like this crop. Yeah, I can brush out that bright spot here if I need to. But I like I like this crop better. I like this line at the top. But um yeah, we could brush this other thing out, really. Something like that, anyway. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, I get it. It was it. Yeah, your eyes always follow the brightest thing in the image, right? I get that, but I I don't know. Somehow I liked it though. All right, last one here. This is um, 
from Steve. G9 with a 56 um, Sigma. Oh, that's a that's a really nice lens. Oh, the highlight brush. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> You're right, Demorkin. Okay, let's uh, let's do this one. Let's just straighten it real quick. Not enough for the light to see. I like this window though. What I'm looking at though exactly is eyeball. It's got kind of scaly scaly things, so it's almost kind of not sure what I'm looking at. I can get all of this window. I like that better than the um, I like the black and white, but I've done too many black and whites today. Faded a little. Okay, nature, we'll see you. Thank, thanks for dropping in. Does the painting extend beyond the wall through the, yeah, I, no, I think there's something in here. Yeah, that's not a reflection, if that's what you're asking. I don't know if this is a big window. This might be a big window down here, too. I really don't know what's going on in this image. I'm just doing the best I can here, honestly. I, I can't tell what's going on. You need a little bit of sharpness. My goodness, Jill, you're still here too? All right, um, I think that's it. Let me see how that, very subtle, but yeah. Lost a little bit of richness in the blue, so let me that up. Okay, now I'm good. Now I'm done. Uh, that's not... Wait. Yeah, before and after. <clears throat> okay, I think... I just cropped that light out. That's basically all I did, and just a little bit on the, a little bit on the contrast, and you can see the reds and everything. <laughs> yes, can't get rid of me. 
Uh, left end is still a little bit, yeah, it's still a little bit off. Yeah, the the, the key stunning errors are still still a tiny bit. It could be if it's a rotate or a key stunning type. I mean, it feels more like barrel distortion here. Little bit of straightening there. Recrop it. Something like that. Okay. Uh, let's look at the viewer edits. And then we'll call it. Uh, go here. That off. All right. So the original image was. Ah, this is really close. This is, no, that's not the original. Let me pull up the original just for reference. This, this is the original. It looks like a few more images came in. But th this is the original image. Very soft. I used my Pen F with the 35mm CCTV lens. Um, so the image is a little bit soft, especially on the corners and stuff. But okay, that's the original. And go to Lightroom. Pull this okay. So this is really close to the original, just a little bit softer. Looks like they dialed back the uh, clarity or something. But it's very soft. It's it's softer than the original. Who did this one? This was from Ed. Okay, Ed. Oh, Ed just left. Um, a little bit softer than the original. I kind of like this. I, what else did he take out here? The original. I feel like, yeah, all this brush. All right, so I see what he did. So he cropped in and got rid of all the brush in the front. All right, that works. And then uh, took some foliage out. Yeah, John John noticed it right away. It took me a minute to find out, to figure that out, but okay. Um, let's see. Ooh, golden hour here. Same thing. Everybody brushed out the foliage. Wow. This has more of a sun ray effect to it because like back in here is really bright. This was from uh, Joni. Okay, Joni, good job. This is from Walter. What? Wow, this is really soft. And same thing, brushed out. Not brushed out, but Propped out all of the uh, all of the foliage. Ooh. Man, coffee wore off. Okay, but yeah, um, very soft. It really looks like this is a little closer to what I saw with my own eyes. Actually, it was really soft. The the uh, fog you could hardly see. Very thick. Okay, and then this is uh, Wu Dang. Nice one, Wu Dang. This is an interesting crop. I, I, yeah, this is interesting too. I like this uh, cinematic crop. Oh, you're still here. Yeah, this is this is an interesting crop. I like it. I like the processing. Kind of went just monotone with a blue. It is interesting. Yeah, like in the Kung Fu movies, right? The wide action shots. Yeah, I totally, I totally get that vibe now. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally getting that vibe. The Ice Hero, right? Wasn't that, um, what's his name, Jet Li? 
I think Jet Li was an ice hero. I'm not sure. Anyhow. Uh, was it Jet Li? Okay, this is um a Morgan. Okay. This one is more of a sepia, but still very soft. Wow. And he left all the foliage in. Which I personally I liked. But I'll, I'll show you guys my edit. I forget what I did exactly. I cropped in. That's all I know. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Tina's still here. My goodness. And this is from Walter also. Okay, Walter. So this is more, mon you know, very soft with a different crop. Similar to Wu Dang, right? But you went, you kept the whole roof line, whereas Wu Dang kept the water and the, and the, and the pegs or the poles of, what do you call it? The pylons, right? Okay, but still went with a very soft, foggy look. Okay. Interesting. Very cinematic looking colors. This teal, right? Um, I like I like the reflection here. I didn't notice that before. If that's in the original, I never noticed the reflection. What is there? But now you can really see it. So basically, increase the contrast and went with this teal coloring. Who was this? This was a. Uh... Yeah, they did a good job with the foliage, right? It looks like they brushed some out too, maybe. This is from Chan. All right, Chan, good job. Good job, interesting. Um, ah, this is another low crop. This is dark though. I like this too. This too. You can really see a lot more details. This this has a different feel to it also, right? Very different than what we've seen so far. It's like every image has got a whole different kind of feel to it. This is a this is a good edit too. Oh. I like it. I like what I'm seeing so far. Look at this. And then totally different feel here too, right? Oh, what is this? This is from John Follows. This has got almost a metal print kind of look to it. I don't know, but very vintage. Wow. And just then, and the subject itself is now just the gazebo, right? Like you didn't care about the fog. You didn't care about, you know, the, the lake bed or anything. It was just, let me get this gazebo or pier or whatever this thing is in. <laughs> and then everything else, you know, forget it. Okay. Um, look at this. This is the same thing, but now we got some color. Randy. Okay, Randy. I was waiting for you to edit one of my photos. <laughs> trying to remember how many do you edit? Do you you probably edit every time, and I just can't remember. But I I feel like you haven't edited one of my photos before. This is cool. Again, same same idea, right? Just focused on the gazebo thing and and but you left the fog in and everything so this one definitely you can see that it was foggy yeah this is good oh you forget it. so i'm right yeah you don't send you don't send edits of my pictures in too often that's what i thought <laughs> thanks roman i'm starving to death here but yeah uh, did you get mine? Uh, I think so. Are you talking about the edit or are you talking about one you want me to edit? I'm not sure. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the end here and I'll look for it. Um, this is from Marcel Van Cotham. Another interesting edit. This is a very copper tone-ish look. And again, just the gazebo, but you kept more foreground. Oh, okay. Um, edit of yours. Okay, yeah, we'll look. I haven't gotten through them all yet. 
Um, if I'll, I'll go back and check the the Google Drive and see if it's there. If it's not here, and this is from Surge. Oh, Denoise AI. So this is some kind of AI software. It is clean. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, yours is very different, Wu Dang. Everybody went really dark. Oh, Walter didn't. Walter went very soft and low contrast, right? So, um, but let's see. You know, look at look at the detail. I mean, there's a little bit of over sharpening here, but it did bring out a lot of detail, man, in the in the pylons and the wood wood things here. Really good. I just I had to zoom in because it's hard to see on YouTube sometimes, right? The uh, the finer details, but you can see it all the way back in here too. I would just I would just turn the sharpening down a, a tad, uh, but otherwise that's really amazing, really good, good job, Serge. <laughs> all right, let's see what else we got here. This is uh. Dawid, Dawid, this is very, very similar to what I did, I think. I think on the crop, anyway. I don't know about the processing. But this is a similar crop to what I had. But I, I don't think I went with a soft monotone. I'll have to look. But yeah, this is good. <laughs> wow, look at this. This is like a mirror image. Who did, who did this one? Neo. Neo, of course, Neo. Neo and Serge have been collaborating because this looks a lot like Neo or Serge's edit, but like a mirror image of it. <laughs> huh. Okay. Um, wow, Ian, good job. Good black and white. There's something nobody's really talked about. I wanted to show you guys something else in this image too. That when when we get to my edit, I'll try. It. Hopefully, it shows up there. But this is a good black and white, nice and clean. Nice clean edit, Ian. Good job. Like this is a little bit more faithful reproduction, but in black and white. So this looks more film-like, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. All right, uh, let me see if I can grab Bob's, because it didn't. Uh, let me go into privacy mode, see if I can find it. There's, there was a few, there was a couple of more images here, Steve Page and Serge. Um, I have to do those on thir Tuesday or Thursday. I'm not going to make it today. Okay, Bob, I see... Um, I mean, I see your image that you sent in. Oh, here it is. All right. Oh, you just sent it <laughs> just now. All right. So let me download that. Heck, I don't need to download it. I can just open it. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, okay. Good clean black and white. Like it. And just kind of like what other people are doing, or some people are doing, just focusing right on that gazebo, the structure itself, and kind of, but you kept all the fog and the ambience in it. This is really, this is a really nice, this feels very film like, like if you took this with a film camera. Definitely. Definitely feels like that. You know what's funny? I'm trying to think now. Uh, I was using the PenF Monochrome Profile, and uh, 
it has a little bit of grain to it. I believe, I believe I had it set to low grain. So when you do a denoise AI, you're removing grain that I actually put into the image, I think, if I recall correctly. Uh, let me pull up my edit, and then I wanted to show you guys something. Uh, let's see. Picture taken. This was taken. November 15th, 2020. Oh, okay, so that's pretty recent. That's today. <laughs> Crap. It was definitely, it was definitely this year. I know. 2020. Definitely fourth quarter. Keyword to live stream. When this was on a photo walk, I went with the photo club. Here it is. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> Me. Oh, come on. Did I grab the wrong one? This one. This this is my edit, right? So, uh, yeah, I just watched my corners, right? Top corner coming in down, then the bottom corner coming up with this foliage. And then, uh, I don't know, some split toning, right? And it's very dark, but then there's a shadow very bright. But if you look at the fog, I mean, the fog is very, very bright, almost clipped, right? But if you look at the fog here, this looks like a guy standing here. Like there's one leg, here's another leg. There's his head right here. There's one arm kind of waving out, his right arm waving out to say hello. And then the other arm just resting here on his side. I don't know if anybody saw the, the, the man in the fog there or not. <laughs> yeah, Bigfoot, right? Uh, but that that's my edit there, just a split tone and a and a crop, square crop. So I'm gonna put this on Instagram. Uh, yeah, it's the holy man. But anyway, I didn't I didn't notice that when I was there, obviously. But when you get back home and you look at your photos, sometimes you see things that that are supernatural. <laughs> it's the swamp thing, right? Yeah, I tried to edit it so it wasn't so obvious that. It looked like a guy standing there, but if I start cranking in some clarity or something, you know, uh, maybe the haze, it, it it shows up even more, right? Let me let me let me not do that because I want to actually post this as a Instagram picture. All right, I have to run. Randy's going. See you, Randy. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for editing my picture this time. And of course, thanks everyone for editing uh, my pictures and then sending your pictures in for me to edit. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed that uh, as much as I did. I always have a lot of fun editing your pictures and especially seeing what you do with mine. And I'm going to put these on my uh, forum, robtrek.com forum. Uh, so you can see all of everybody's viewer edits uh, along with the original image that you didn't get a chance to edit at this time you can still download it from the forum and, and edit and post it for everyone to see uh, but as always uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed your time here I appreciate you spending your your afternoon or morning with me uh, and I'll be back on Tuesday morning 7 a.m. my time Eastern Standard Time so you guys have a good weekend what's left of it <laughs>